we are going to discuss Lissajous figures. To be precise, ellipse generation. And this is possible by superposing two perpendicular simple harmonic motions. Simple harmonic motions or oscillations or vibrations. Previously, we discussed case 1, the method of generation of linear traces. Or straight lines. Superposition of these vibrations, one along x and one along y, leads to generation of linear trace the equation of which is y equal to x and in case 2 we discussed generation of circular traces and that can be left handed or right handed depending upon how you view it and this was what we got these are alternate prescriptions for x and y which are mutually perpendicular and on superposition leads to these circular traces which are traced in the manner shown here. We now discuss case 3 that involves generation of ellipse or elliptical traces. At the beginning let me say a few words about symmetry of ellipse based upon the orientation or configuration of the ellipse we can draw it in two ways and one is drawing it symmetrically with respect to x and y axis and this is how we can do it suppose this is the x axis this is the y axis the ellipse is spread out along x axis from this point the coordinate of which is a0 this being the origin up to this point on the negative x axis the coordinate of which is minus a0 a being a constant it is less spread along y axis up to this point whose coordinate is 0b and on the negative y the ellipse is spread up to this point whose coordinate is 0 minus b b being a constant and a is greater than b so we have an ellipse the symmetry axis of which is obviously x axis and y axis since a is greater than b the spreading is more along x-axis and the major axis is the x-axis and the minor axis is the y-axis. These are the coordinates of what we call the vertices. So it has two vertex. One is here, the other one is here. And these two points are referred to as co-vertices the center is at 0 0 the equation of the ellipse is and this ellipse is symmetric in the sense that if we fold it 
along x-axis, then the part above the x-axis will fall upon the part below the x-axis so that there is perfect coincidence. The same is true if we fold it along y-axis. So the portion to the left of y will fall upon the portion to the right of y and there is a complete matching. So this is y-axis. In other words, the ellipse is oriented symmetrically with respect to the x-axis and the y-axis. For the other type of ellipse, x-axis and y-axis are not the symmetric axis. So, the ellipse in this situation is not symmetric with respect to x and y-axis. So, this type of ellipse is an oblique ellipse. Oblique with respect to x and y-axis. And let us show it. Suppose this is x-axis. And this is y-axis. This is the origin. The ellipse we are speaking about will be oblique to these x and y-axis so that it is placed in this manner. Let us draw the symmetry axis in this case of the ellipse. This is the minor axis of the ellipse. It is less spread out along this direction. And it has maximum spread along these directions. So this is the major axis of the ellipse. This is the minor axis of the ellipse. And clearly, neither of these axes are x-axis or y-axis. In other words, the symmetry axis makes an angle with respect to the coordinate axis x or y. In other words, this ellipse is rotated with respect to this ellipse. So it is slanted or obliquely placed with respect to coordinate axis and if we fold the ellipse along x or along y axis there will not be perfect coincidence and there will be a heavy mismatch. Now this symmetric ellipse is described by this equation. The equation that describes this oblique ellipse is, so let us write down the equation. where A, B, H, C are constants such that H square minus A, B is less than 0. So if this is so, then this equation will represent an oblique ellipse, oblique with respect to x axis and y axis. Let us now discuss how these ellipses can be generated by superposing two perpendicular simple harmonic vibrations. So we proceed to discuss the case 3A which deals with generation of symmetric ellipse. Let us consider the simple harmonic vibrations. Let us write them down. For X and for Y, there can be various alternatives. X can be A sine omega t plus phi and Y can be B cosine of omega t plus phi and let us refer to this case as A. X can be also minus A sine omega t plus phi and Y can be minus B cos of omega t plus phi. Let us refer to this case as B. The other alternatives are x can be a sine omega t plus phi 
and y is negative b cos omega t plus phi and let us call it case c another alternative situation is when x is negative a sin omega t plus phi and y is b cosine omega t plus phi so these are the four alternatives that we have chosen and there is an x motion there is a y motion so motion occurs in xy plane the t eliminated equation is easy to find out let us evaluate x square by a square which gives us sine square and let us evaluate y square by b square which gives us cos square so if we sum them we have one so whichever alternatives we take what we end up with is this equation which represents a symmetric ellipse and symmetry with respect to x-axis and y-axis that is the coordinate axis the center is at 0 0 the the length of semi major axis is a and the length of semi minor axis that along y is b having obtained a symmetric ellipse let us now investigate how it is traced by focusing attention to these equations so let us put the values of omega t plus phi here and we shall collect the coordinates x and y and write it here we'll indicate the points here and finally the plot will be made here the nature of trace or the direction of trace can be obtained just by studying two points one is omega t plus phi is zero and the other one is pi by two We shall now determine the corresponding points at omega t plus phi is 0 we have x 0 and y is b so it is 0 b and at omega t plus phi pi by 2 x is a and y is 0 now the plot is an ellipse so this is x axis and this is y axis 0b is this point let us call it p and a0 is this point q so this is p this is q and the tracing is from p to q we next come to this case the value of x at omega t plus phi 0 is 0 and that of y is minus b and the values of x and y at omega t plus phi equal to pi by 2 are minus a and 0 so this is x axis this is y axis and this is the ellipse that is traced and 0b is 
0 along x minus b along y so it is this point which let us call r and this point which is minus a along x axis and 0 along y is say s so this is r and this is s so the tracing is from r to s similar to this situation we now study case c the value of x is 0 at omega t plus phi 0 and that of y is minus b the value of x is at pi by 2 a and the value of y is 0 so these are the points this is x axis this is y axis and here is the ellipse let us identify the points 0 minus b is this point which is r and a0 is this point which we denoted by q so this is r and this is q so the curve is traced in this manner from r to q and let us now move on to case d the coordinates at omega t plus phi equal to 0 are 0 b and that at pi by 2 will be minus a 0 so this is the x-axis this is the y-axis and this is the ellipse that is stressed the point 0 b is this one which we denoted by p and the point minus a 0 is this point which is s so the curve is stressed from p to s and in all the plots this is the origin from the plot of the ellipses it follows that for these two choices both plus or both minus the tracing are of similar nature and for any one minus and any one plus that is for one plus and one minus the tracings are in a similar nature but opposite to these two cases so let us mention it clearly whether it is left-handed or right-handed and of course that will be decided by the direction we are looking if looked back that is along minus z then it is clear that for these two cases the tracing is left-handed or it is clockwise on the other hand for these two ellipses the tracing is right-handed or anti-clockwise and if we view the same thing along z cap then the nature of tracing is just the opposite so it is right-handed or anti-clockwise and these are left-handed and clockwise so whenever we mention a right-handed or left-handed clockwise or anti-clockwise it is judicious to mention who is looking from which direction otherwise such specification has no meaning we next come to case 3b and we'll study generation of oblique ellipse consider two simple harmonic motions one is given by x equal to a cos omega t which is along x axis and the other one is y equal to b cosine of omega t plus delta which is along y axis so the motions are perpendicular
the vibrations have same frequency omega in other words the frequency ratio is 1 is to 1 because both have frequencies omega so if you cancel omega you have 1 is to 1 frequency and they have different amplitudes one has amplitude A, the other has amplitude B. The motion occurs in XY plane and let us find the T eliminated equation. By writing X by A from the first equation which is cos omega t and from the second one y by b is cos of omega t plus delta and we can expand it to get instead of cos omega t we will put x by a and sin omega t can be written as 1 minus cos square omega t whole under root so it is 1 minus x square by a square whole under root so let us write y by b is equal to x by a cos delta minus this factor So this is the T eliminant or the equation that does not contain T in it explicitly. We can rearrange it. Let us take this Y by B to the right side. So X by A cos delta minus Y by B. And let us bring this term to the left side. And now let us square both sides. Squaring gives us we can expand it and that gives us so here we have a cos square delta And let us write it separately. So when transposed we have cos square delta plus sin square delta equal to 1 and the simplified equation becomes So this is the equation that we end up with. This is the equation that is followed by the particle upon which two perpendicular SHMs namely these two were superposed. Now writing a equal to 1 by a square b as 1 by b square h as minus cos of delta by a b and we can bring this term to the left side so it becomes minus sin square delta so instead of minus sin square delta we can write c so this equation takes the form And let us find h square minus a b so 
so we have 1 minus cos square delta and that gives us sine square delta and this was written first so we'll have a minus sign here so this is actually so it is less than 0 which is the condition that this equation that is this equation represents an oblique ellipse so let us write down the characteristic features of this equation the characteristics of this equation are it represents ellipse in xy plane second is it represents an oblique ellipse to be specific x and y are not the symmetry axis so if this is the x-axis this is the y-axis we have an inclined ellipse this is the origin and this is the symmetry axis of the ellipse so we have an ellipse that is rotated with respect to the x-axis by this angle theta the value of which can be shown to be And further, this ellipse is described within a rectangle. Whose sides are 2A and twice B. So ellipse is described within a rectangle to a to b let us conclude that the lissajous pattern is an oblique ellipse as shown here and the pattern can be changed by varying phase difference delta between the two motions x motion and y motion by varying the frequency or the frequency ratio here it is 1 is to 1 we can make it 2 is to 1 3 is to 1 and so on so forth and by varying the amplitudes a and b